We will now hear from Katie Robertson presenting Back to the Kitchen, the future of family flourishing is housed in the domestic economy. By every measure, this middle-aged mother of two is the glorious product of a feminist society. With a happy, healthy child on one hip and a briefcase across the other, she marches with the empowerment granted her by centuries of suffering. Her confidence she wears in her smile, daring anyone to question her authority. When her stiletto heels tap the tile hallway, the employees in their cubicles know just as well as her own children that they ought to start behaving. Her strength is repeated to her like a mantra by our culture. The message at the top of her notepad crowns her a queen. The Super Bowl commercial for deodorant incites her to kick inequality. The lotion advertisement wants to hashtag make space for women. The cursive on her mug tells her, empowered women empower women. Everyone congratulates her on her success, but no one ever gave her another option. Despite the barrage of encouragement, this mother is racked with longing from sunrise to sunset. As she drops her children off at daycare with strangers she herself barely knows, her heart aches for the lost minutes and years she knows is being sacrificed to her career. Never mind, she tells herself, I'm setting an example for my daughter's future. As she goes about her day, the coffee cannot sustain her after a long night of calming nocturnal children. As she returns home to toys sprawled across the floor, shoveling down takeout, for the third night this week, the front door unlocks, and the carpet muffles the heavy footsteps of her weary husband returning from work. Her heart breaks, sensing the emotional distance growing week after week. Her sighs and worries carry her to sleep and into the next day, when the timer resets and the routine repeats, never once pausing to ask, how can this be the good life? Although some devalue the centralized home, considering it a proper casualty of the progress of history, I argue that the domestic economy is ideal for families because it is life-giving and sustainable. To understand the domestic economy, we must first acknowledge that humans long for home. Being created in the image of a triune God, we were made for interdependence, for community rather than the dream-seeking individualism that characterizes American culture. The most natural form of this is the home, centered around the Christian family, led by servant fathers, with responsibilities according to how each was created. When fulfilling these natural responsibilities, the family forms a domestic economy, working complementarily to produce spiritual and physical goods. The time in which we live is unique in the lens of world history. Beginning in the 19th century, two competing ideals of value emerged. The classical way of life found value in relationships, as formulated by John Ruskin, while the new placed value in currency alone, according to John Stuart Mill. Because an age of industrialization rattled the world and America its epicenter, these two values were put at odds. The family was split apart, rendering it unable to work together as a cohesive unit, and the home was stripped of its traditional economic value. Money-making became a source of identity, and social revolutions were fought for the right to chase such glory. Women are encouraged to lean in, to borrow Facebook COO Sheryl Sandberg's now famous phrase, to careers outside the home, as well as invest within, shouldering a double portion of responsibility as compared with their husbands. Tradition is shunned, and enlightenment embraced. Mill's philosophy actively shapes the world we live in today. But even today's world is not the one our parents grew up in. Cul-de-sacs, once swarming with children running in and out of each other's houses, are silent and empty. Even church members cannot recognize their fellow parishioners. And according to a recent study, families spend only 37 minutes of quality time together per day. 
In this frantically enlightened world, friendships are feeble, hospitality hard found, family dinners near extinct. This lifestyle has been most detrimental to the youngest of our communities, the children. Often, children are compared to sponges in their early years. Would you rather your child soak up what the vague attention of a daycare worker has to offer, or love from the mother who brought them into the world? While the home has been counted as menial and worthless, Christians should not regard it as such. For our hope lies not in material ambition, but the cultivation of souls. In the words of Mother Teresa, if you want to change the world, go home and love your family. The past century has allowed America to sit down at the feast feminism had set for society, only to find that it is utterly distasteful toward the family structure as biblically ordained. Technology has come full circle so that the home can once again be central to our economy. Women have proven their aptitude. The question remaining concerns not ability, but priority. What will you choose to prioritize? Will you be the friend who is always there with a cup of tea and a listening ear? Will you be the neighbor who delivered groceries to the at-risk on her street? Will you be the mother who raised courageous children to be warriors for the kingdom of God? Or will you be nothing but a faint memory in the minds of those who live after you because your absence was always more real than your presence? Invest in the future. Fight for the family.